Hello and welcome to South West London TV. I'm Alastair Greener here at Olympia in West London for the Wines of South Africa trade show. I'm joined by Jo Waring who's organised today's show and she's going to show me around some of these amazing wines. Believe it or not, in South Africa there are seven regions, 31 districts, so lots to taste and lots to see. And Jo, tell us what we are going to see here at the trade show. Okay, well, uh, we're a company based in Wimbledon, um, and our job is to promote South Africa in the UK market. So uh, this is a really important day for us. We've got lots of producers here, lots of different wines um, to try, um, and really a chance to find out what's new and exciting from South Africa. If you look here at the map of South Africa, you've got um, areas like Stellenbosch, which is the real heart of the wine lands, up to warmer regions like Swartland, making really exciting wines. Um, lots of cool climate, sea breeze, Breezes down in the south, fresh, crisp wines. Um, so what I thought we could do is meet our master of wine, Tim Atkin, who's here. He knows so much about South Africa, and hopefully he can give us some tips and find some wines that you'll enjoy. I can't wait. It's only 11 o'clock, but I'm up for it. <laughs> well, I've already got my first glass of wine to taste, and Joe has now introduced me to Tim Atkin. And one of the things that amazes me, Tim, is it's a massive country with so many different wines. How do you even start to choose the right wine for you? I mean, the great thing about South Africa is it, it, it is a one-stop shop. That it does everything, you know, from, from Sauvignon Blanc to sparkling wines to, to fortifieds, port style fortifieds, to rich reds, to light Pinot Noirs. It does everything. Um, so I would say, if you're going to buy South African wine, open your mind and just say, you know, let's try everything. Now, of course, you've looked at all of the different wines and you've just completed a report today, I understand. I have. It's, it's just come out this morning um, at, at three o'clock in the morning. I finished <laughs> it at one o'clock in the morning uh, and here it is. It's out. Um, so I publish this every year. This is my sixth South African report and it's based on a month's tasting in the country and then about a month's writing back in the UK. And it's just my opinion, but it's kind of an overview of everything that I think is great about South Africa. Tell us a little bit more about the evolution of South African wine. Well, there's been a huge evolution really since 1994, the first democratic elections, and political changes coincided with an opening up of the country in many ways, uh, and people producing wines that were more international in style, but paradoxically kind of more South African as well. Um, so you've had this huge explosion of wineries. Many of the best wineries that are here today didn't exist in 1994. So it's an amazing just explosion of creativity. But it's a very historic place to make wine. You know, over 350 years of wine heritage. It's much older than Australia, much older than New Zealand, not quite as old as South America. But it, it has that kind of place between the two worlds in a way. So you get a little bit of that kind of new world elegance in inverted commas, but also some of the richness and texture that you get from new world wines. What for you are the most exciting wines around at the moment? Moment. In South Africa, I, I mean, I would say a, a grape that I absolutely love is Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc, there's more Chenin Blanc in South Africa than there is in any other country in the world, and it's it's a great variety. It's made its own. Um, for reds, I would kind of say it would be a be a two-way choice between Syrah, which you'd expect in South Africa because it's a hot climate, Mediterranean climate, and the other one would be Pinot Noir, which may surprise you because it's an elegant. Burgundian, cooler climate grape. But what South Africa is doing with Pinot Noir in its coolest climates is remarkable. Well, that's my favorite grape, so I'm looking forward to trying some of that. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, thank you so much Pleasure. for taking time nice out with you. us. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing more of the show. Thanks very much. Thank you. See you. No, unfortunately, we haven't been transported to South Africa. We're actually here in a quiet part of the exhibition hall to do my favourite thing of the day, which is to taste some of the wines. And I'm joined by Morena from Wines of South Africa, who's going to guide me through what we have here. So let's start off with the sparkling wine. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so in South Africa we refer to our sparkling wines as MCC or Method Cup Classique. The same as champagne, uh, in my opinion it makes me happy in the morning or I can celebrate or commiserate with a beautiful bottle of MCC. They have fine bubbles and a beautiful refined palette and most of our bubblies are made of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grapes which is traditional in the same way that they do in champagne. So cheers to that. Cheers. Next up is Old Vine Chenin Blanc. We are focusing on 35 years and older uh, vineyards and of course Chenin Blanc is uh, a flagship for us in terms of the fact that we have the biggest planting of Chenin Blanc in the world. 
we also have sansa here, uh, used to be very widely planted uh, in South Africa way back when. Uh, these have all been ripped up but there's a huge comeback in sansa and it's a very light style wine that uh, we're seeing a lot of coming from the Swartland area. Uh, next up here I selected a fair trade wine. Uh, it is important that the money that goes into the, the sales of these wines filters through to the workers who tend to the vines. Um, and, and this isn't necessarily only through fair trade, but most of the wineries really focus on upliftment of their people. And then right at the end, of course, we have Pinotage, the grape varietal that was born in 1926 uh, through uh, the meticulous planning of Dr. Abram Perold. And uh, it really is our, our big boy on the red side. We really cater for everyone and, um, you know, you can't go wrong. But for me, I think the best thing to suggest is try and buy and you'll find something that you like along the way. Well, it's been lovely to find out more about them, but really, we've got to taste them now. And while we do that, uh, you can go off and have a look around at some other things. So I'm lucky enough to have found another master of wine, Greg Sherwood. And Greg, one of the things that always confuses the consumer is which wine should they try? And what for you stands out about South African wine? I've been working in London 20 years in the wine trade here, and I do remember the early 2000s when people say, I'll have, I would like a nice juicy red, but not from South Africa. I haven't heard that for a good part of 10 years now. Everyone has finally realized that there is great quality. Uh, we've bridged that gap between the classics of France with the just enough fruit and sunshine of the new world, uh, where other, some other countries are maybe a little bit too much on one side or the other and we're just right in the middle we're the sweet spot and the consumers love that and they can see that as well south africa of course is a great tourist destination we've got behind us a lovely image of trekking through the vineyards what would you say to people who may be considering a holiday to south africa and might be thinking about going to wineries while they're there well actually it's just coming to my head the most exciting thing about cape town is that you don't have to plan it to go for two, three, four weeks like to Australia or something. You can just go in, dip in for, for a bank holiday, a long weekend or for a, even four or five days. Hit the wine lands for a week or two, um, hit the top restaurants and see the sights and then get back to Europe with no jet lag and you can do it like that. It's incredible and it's, I fly down there all the time for meetings. I sometimes think, why don't I just go for a weekend with my wife? It's like a coach to Edinburgh. <laughs> You know, it's, it's fantastic. So, it, it, you know, there's so many opportunities there for, uh, for certainly for great wine experiences, but the food, you know, the food and, you know, the whole tourist is, you know, is an endless category in itself. Well, you've convinced me. I'm ready to pack my bags. <laughs> I'm now joined by David Clawson, who runs one of the top wine bars in London. And it's very interesting to get a perspective from someone who actually serves wine to their customers. And what are people saying about South African wine? Yeah, we only get, honestly, positive responses. And I, I like to think that's partly the wines that we choose to serve them. What are people's common preconceptions about South African wine that maybe don't apply anymore? There's just been a, a really a, a tidal wave change, in my opinion. Um, you know, people who started really doing things up in the Swartland and changing the whole landscape up there, different grape varietals, Rhone varietals, um, and then all this, and then and things that were, you know, kind of the old classics, the Chenin Blancs, uh, the Bordeaux blends, you know, kind of rediscovering those and actually seeing like, wow, I mean, like the stuff that's coming out of there is world class. So David, you come from the west coast of America where there's some great new world wines. How does South Africa compare? There's been a lot of uh, excitement in the United States as well in the last five years or so. Um, and it's a pendulum kind of, I think, what has swung a bit, just like it has in South Africa, where you know, maybe 15 years ago in the US, you had these big, heavy, extracted, kind of fruit bomby, alcohol bomb type wines, the kind of the Parker wines, you might say. And now there's really been a movement towards lighter, fresher wines that are about drinkability. And the same, see the same thing in South Africa, in my opinion, um, where producers are really striving for that, that balance um, and wines that are food friendly and that, you know, kind of want to have a second glass of.
And that's to me is like, that's the essence of wine. That's what wine should be. Lots of people will be watching this who have their own wine bars, their own restaurants, and they're thinking about whether they should stock South African wine. What would your response to that be? I, I mean, absolutely yes. But at the same time, you know, like any wine region on earth, it's about which producers you pick and, and the story behind them and how you communicate and sell those wines. Um, you know, for us, you know, it's, it's all about small artisanal producers. It's about having a story um, and then kind of relate telling that story to the customers. And I think that's where the true magic of wine happens. And I understand like, you know, a lot of places they just want to sell, get some wine on the table. Uh, but, you know, there's some really special stuff happening in South Africa with ma wines made by special people and in interesting ways. And, and I think it's the transmitting that story that's really exciting. Well, we've just scratched the surface here at Olympia and what an amazing day it's been. And if you'd like to find out more about Wines of South Africa, then go to the website below. You can also find out more about touring the winelands of South Africa. That's certainly on my list. This is Alistair Greener for Southwest London TV in Olympia. And I've got my list of a lot more wines that I'm going to taste. See you soon.